I did a brief overview of what we're going to be doing this evening during our devotional time. And again, the topic is gratitude and thanksgiving. I broke it into four categories. Category number one, we're going to take a very brief trip back exactly nine months to January 2nd, 2020. It was a Thursday. And we're going to see what has expired or transpired from that day into this day. The second part of our breakdown, we're going back to the scriptures and review a little bit about our two scriptures and then we'll add a couple more. And we'll look at some things that God uh, undertook and did for nations and cities and so forth uh, when he exposed their lack of thankfulness and their lack of gratitude. The third part of our division will be something that we are thankful for. And I'm going to go over two or three or four or five or eight things, depending on how much time we have. And there'll be things that perhaps you haven't thought about. And I'll give a little explanation as to why we might want to be thankful for that. And in conclusion, we'll kind of recap what we talked about. And I've got a little thing that somebody in Japan sent me this week in an email. And, and I thought it fit in kind of well, so we'll probably close with so it's January 2nd, 2020, it's a Thursday. We have a whole brand new year of opportunity in front of us. And what a year it's going to be. Who knew what the term new normal meant? We'd never even heard it. Who knew what the term social distancing meant? Never even heard it. Some may have known what PPDs were, those of us in the medical field, the personal protective devices, but the majority of people didn't know exactly what PPDs were. How many of you owned a mask on January 2nd, 2020? Okay, I know three or four people, some people had it for medical reasons. How many own more than one mask now? How many have a whole car front seat for a mask that are used in drugs and all this kind of thing? Now, if I had told you that on January 2nd, Thursday, 2020, you'd have been taking my temperature. Speaking of taking temperature, who would have ever thought that as you walk into Friendship Baptist Church, you'd have your temperature taken? Or you'd fill out a medical questionnaire for a period of time? Or you'd sign a release of liability because this is a dangerous place to come and you might get sick. Nobody would have thought of that. Who would have thought that schools would have been closed in mid-March? Or businesses closed down? Who would have ever dreamed there would be nationwide riots and unrest? And tearing down of historical statues? Remember, this is only nine months ago. Now, we knew this was an election year, but who would have anticipated the intense political strife that we're experiencing? Who would have known that Jerry Farwell Jr., the president and chancellor of Liberty College, a Christian college, would step down because of an Instagram suggested photo and because it was revealed that his wife was having an affair with a male pool attendant. Nine short months. And I haven't even touched this the surface. Let me give you some interesting news. They are projecting on November 2nd, 2020, a meteor to go close to the earth that'll be the size of a truck. Whether it will hit the earth, not hit the earth, who knows? We are living in strange times. Okay, Bill, why did we have that exercise? Why did you recall all of these things? Why is that relevant? Well, glad you asked. We opened up with 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 5. And in verse 2 we found amongst all those other litany of sins the term ungrateful. Let that sink in. Go through the list of sins that are mentioned there. And in there is the term ungrateful. Does God put a premium on thankfulness? Does God put a premium on gratefulness? 
He seems to take it pretty seriously. And the lack of gratefulness, the lack of gratitude, he seems to include in a whole litany of sins that would be extremely shameful, things that the church would never be involved in, we hope. And yet, the question is, as Christians, are we grateful? And has God finally had enough of the concept of unthankfulness and ungratefulness? Again, in Romans 1, 18, 22, verse 21 talks about the lack of thankfulness. And verse 32 at the very end talks about those who do those things that are listed not only encourage others to do them, but are also gleeful, happy, celebratory. Do we see this? Do we see this? I'm not gloom and doom, I'm just presenting what the Holy Bible talks about. And perhaps we need to pay a little bit more attention to these things. Tonight I want to represent to you or present to you a hypothesis. The hypothesis I can't prove, but I'm going to present some information for you to ponder and for the Holy Spirit of God to work with. And the hypothesis is something that the lack of thankfulness and gratitude, not only in the church, or especially in the church, and the nation may incur and may bring forth the wrath of God and judgment. Now most of us are familiar with the biblical account of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, and that's found in the book of Genesis chapter 18 and 19. Usually when we refer to that passage, and particularly to that particular city, we think of sexual immorality. But I want to draw your attention to Ezekiel chapter 16. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 49 and 50. Here we get a little bit more insight as to God's dealing with the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, there was sexual immorality going on. Yes, there were horrendous sins. And if we look at Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 49 and 50, we find this Behold, this was the iniquity of thy system, uh, pardon me, thy sister Sodom, pride, full of bread, an abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Verse 50, and they were haughty and committed abominations before me, therefore I took them away as I saw good. Let's go back to verse 49. Pride. What's the opposite of being grateful? I know, being ungrateful. But stretching a little bit further, is pride the opposite of humbleness, gratefulness, thanksgiving? This is one of the things that Sodom, Sodom was, was guilty of. Look at some of these things. Fullness of bread, what does that mean? They ate, drank, and were merry. Does that remind you of any country that we happen to be very well familiar with? And an abundance of idleness. Verse 50, and they were haughty. <laughs> what does the word haughty mean? I didn't take time to look it up, but I'm going to connect the dots with unthankfulness. Ungratefulness. And God looked down, and because of all this abomination, including pride, including haughtiness, destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. So we have an example where the wrath of God brought judgment. He was finally fed up with all the things that were going on and said, enough is enough. Is this the only example in the New Old Testament that we have? The correct answer is obviously no. Let's look at Jerusalem. How do you spell Jer Jerusalem? J-E-R-U-S-A-L-E-M. J -E -R 
U S A. How about you? USA is right in the middle of Jerusalem. I know you are, but I just had to bring it to your attention. I felt that uh, that would be interesting. Let's go to the book of Lamentations. We don't often visit this book, and we're going to visit another book that we don't often visit. Lamentations, chapter 2, and we're going to look at one more verse. Now, obviously, I don't have time to give you the whole historical perspective of what was going on in Jerusalem. But I do want to refresh your memory that Judah, Israel, Jerusalem are the apple of God's eye. They are his chosen people. And yet, in Lamentations chapter 2, verse 1, Now hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel, and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. If God was angry and covered with a cloud, his favored nation, his chosen people, because of the things that were going on, and if you go back in the book of Lamentation, if you go ahead in the book of Lamentation, you can see the whole litany of things that were going on and what caused God's anger. Yeah, we're going to be spirit. Is it possible that God will wink and look the other way when he's chosen people? He destroyed utterly. That divine judgment happened in 586 BC. So now we've seen Sodom and Gomorrah and the sins that were involved with them. We've seen Jerusalem lose the favor of God. Let's go on to one additional city. Let's go over to the book of Nahum. Again, this is not a book that you very often would turn to. Nahum chapter 3 and verse 8. Now this particular segment of scripture talks about Nineveh. Where do we know about Nineveh? Jonah and the fish. Remember God said, I want you to go and preach in Nineveh. Jonah said, no, nope, I'm going the other way. He spends three, times with the, three days with the fish. He finally gets out. He's finally obedient. And what happens? He preaches and the whole city repents. And God spares them. Now it's very interesting, if you want to do a Bible study, find out why Jonah was so reluctant to go to Nineveh. You have to know the historical concept of there. It just wasn't that Jonah was being disobedient. He had a whole litany of reasons why he could care less if the people in Nineveh suffered, were wiped out. And so there's a little bit more in-depth than he was just being disobedient and running the other way. You may want to check that out sometime when you've got some time. And again, as we look at Nahum, we look through the chapter, and it's kind of a short book, of all the things that were going on in Nineveh. And we see that eventually God said, enough is enough. If you look at chapter 3 and verse 8, Art thou better than populous no, that was st uh, situated among the rivers, that had the waters around about it, whose rampant was the sea, and her wall was from the sea. If you dissect and bisect and study that verse, what they're really saying is they had lots of pride. And God is saying, Are you better than no? We've already established the correlation between pride and lack of gratitude and lack of faithfulness. And so about 100 years after Nineveh was spared because of the preaching of Jonah and the people repenting, we find them in the same situation and it happened sometime between 663 and 612 BC, judgment fell. And it's interesting if you look through Nahum, you look through this, it talks about the fact that Nineveh, Nineveh will be completely wiped away and its 
will be no longer remembered. It wasn't until the 1840s, 50s, and 60s that archaeologists discovered what they thought were some of the ruins of Nineveh. So there's a very long period of time when the Bible's forecast of the future of Nineveh was right on target. We've looked at Sodom, we've looked at Jerusalem, we've looked at Nineveh. They all had some of the same characteristics that we have today. They all had some of the same characteristics that we hold ourselves to be proud about. Good economy, I'm happy about that. Don't get me wrong, we got plenty of food. Nice car, homes, friends, plenty of time for leisure activities. And I'm not against any of that, believe me. I hope someday to have that time to do those things. But they were ungrateful and they were unthankful. And the fear is that we are living in a country that is echoing some of the same characteristics. I guess that we are cognitive of the fact that thankfulness toward God is important, being having a heart or an attitude of gratitude is important, but I think we kind of flatten the curves there. We don't put it in the same category as all of these other horrendous, but if we go back to the Word of God, we see the importance that He places on us. Let's talk a little bit about things to be grateful for. Now, I know we all have our litany of thank you for the chocolate cake. Chocolate chip cookies are good too. And I would be very thankful for those. A little commercial, come on, a little levity. When was the last time you thanked God for gravity? I see our scientists engineers are smiling. How often do you think about gravity? You don't. It's, but it's something that you use every single day and you don't even think about it. What about drinkable water? Have any of you traveled to foreign countries where they said, eh, you're American, maybe you better not drink the water. I mean, I go to my faucet, I turn it on, I drink the water. Don't think a thing about it. I've been to countries where they're like, no, no, Americans, no, take the bottle of water. In 1 Corinthians 2 9, it says, I have not seen your ear heard, nor hath entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. When's the last time you thank God for your eyes and your ears? Do you know how your eyes work? The rods and the cones and the images come in and they're upside down and your brain instantaneously flips it over so that you see what you see and you've got color. You want to have a discussion with somebody who believes in evolution, bring up the eye. And if that's not enough, bring up the ear. Three little bones transfers vibration. Sends a message to the brain. The brain unscrambles it, and you can hear what I'm saying, whether you like it or not. Incredible. Do you have the ability to read and write? I saw a bumper sticker that once said, if you can read this, thank the teacher. If you can read this, thank God, because there are people who can't. Do you thank God for this church building? Let me give you a little historical perspective. I came in 93. Faith is going to smile here. We had what we called a driveway parking lot. I'm being very generous. It was stone kind of in mud. Now, I'm not a mud guy with my car. I'm sorry. That's just the kind of guy I am. You know where we got the money for the initial parking lot? Does anybody know? I know. There was a Baptist church that was being decommissioned and they had $15,000 in their account. And they donated it to Friendship Baptist Church to put it up drive. And $15,000, even back in 93, didn't go all that far, but we got an upgrade. 
We have about 25 acres here. I don't know if you know that or not. We are debt free. It's unheard of. Thank God for this building. When I was in England, I went to the Christian Service Center. It was a Pentecostal church. Boy, did I learn a lot. I didn't drink all the Kool-Aid, but I did learn a lot. <laughs> anyway, we rented a building. It was a town hall. And a little barrier card on the paper. So we would go in on Sunday morning, because guess who used the town hall on Saturday afternoon and Saturday night? The townspeople. They played rugby, so they'd come in with their cleats with mud, and they'd have a couple of boots, skis, and they'd smoke and things of this nature. So we'd go in on Sunday, clean it all out, take some benches. We didn't even have these kind of chairs. We had benches. Pentecostal services are two hours long. Two hours. One hour of singing, one hour of preaching. So you're sitting on the bench for two hours. Two hours. And we were grateful to have a place to be. And we got to pay for it. We got to pay rent on this place that we had swept out, cleaned out, got rid of the bottles, got rid of the cigarettes, and things of this nature. The point is this God has been extremely gracious to us in lending us this building. We are only the custodians, we are only the stewards. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You have my permission to turn the lights on if nobody's here. You have my permission to pick up those pieces of paper that you see in the hallway. That's called stewardship. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox. Sorry, Mark, I couldn't resist. <laughs> How many of you thank God for the Holy Bible? We have a ministry called John and Romans. Why do we have it? So that people can have a section of the Holy Bible, John and and Romans. How many here own one Bible? Or two? Or three? Or four? Do we thank God? Are we thankful for the entire Word of God? The Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, it says, And you shall receive power from my heart. The Holy Spirit is the power of God in the church age. Pastor has continually talked about revival. Revival is a sweeping, and I'm going to mention it in a couple of minutes, wave of the Holy Spirit. Modern conveniences, electric, rear view cameras in cars when I park next to trucks and SUVs, I can't see where I'm going, I kind of, they're wonderful once you get used to them. Garage door openers. I was thinking of TV. When I was growing up, we had to get up and turn the knob and all this kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, got it. Air conditioning. We have a church that's air conditioned for crying out loud. This letter I got from Japan, they were in the 90s and 95s, and it was warm and humid, and they don't have air conditioning. Our jobs, our careers, our professions. We've talked a little bit about God's perspective of the lack of gratitude, the lack of thanksgiving. We've talked a little bit as we have experienced tremendous change in our lives from January 2nd, 2020 to September 2nd, 2020. Everybody is confused. Christians, non-Christians, business people, students, kids, we're living in a crazy time. Has God somehow taken a cloud and put over our nation? Because we are not grateful, because we are not thankful. That was the hypothesis. I don't know. We'll have to decide. But there is good news. In 1 John 1 9, it says, if we confess our sin, and we've already established, according to God's word, that the lack of thankfulness and gratitude is a sin because it's listed with a tremendous amount of all grievous sins. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What does righteousness mean? Rightness. We are restored to him. 
So if we had committed the sin of ungrateful or the lack of thankfulness, we are assured that when we confess that sin, God will not only forgive it, but he'll also restore us. The question is, are we beginning to experience the removal of God's hand and protection? Because we have lost the attitude of gratitude and the spirit of thanksgiving. Let me close with this little saying I got from an email from Japan. This week, I mean, it was timely. It was timely for me. We are like the wind chimes of God. We need to stay in tune so when His Spirit moves through us, it will create a pleasant sound for others to hear.